One of the saddest things I saw in prison was my cell partner, who was a pod laundryman, get into a fight with somebody over the laundry and almost bite his finger off. But it wasn't really about the laundry. It was about the heat. It was about the lack of rec. It was about the stress. And then we were all stuck in that tiny place and had nothing to do with our energy, with our stress, and with our aggression. The pod laundryman was responsible for washing everybody's clothes twice a week, and he could do more if somebody paid him. The problem was that some guys would have so many things. This one guy in question had about 10 different towels and wanted him to wash them all at once, but that would have taken at least two loads with the washing machine, and that would have put him behind schedule. And looking back, he probably should have just washed the towels and not made an issue of it, but he brought it back and said, look, dude, I'll wash a normal number of clothes. I'm not washing all your stuff. Like, take your stuff back and bring me something reasonable. The guy ended up going back downstairs and throwing the laundry bag at him in the laundry room and telling him to do it or else. And they got into it again. He didn't do the guy's laundry, and then lunch happened. We had to walk out of the pod and down this hallway and down these long, narrow steps to get to lunch, but there was a long landing where guys could fight because there were no cameras and there were no COs. So when my cell partner came around the corner, the guy was waiting on him, he took a swing on him, they started fighting, and they went back and forth, and the guy was really getting the better of him. He had my cell partner in a headlock and went for a fish hook, which is where you stick your finger in his mouth and you can control somebody by basically trying to rip their mouth open. It's also a really terrible idea because my cell partner then bit down on his finger and just kept gnawing and gnawing, and there was blood like spewing out of his mouth like a vampire movie. And finally it got so bad the guy stopped trying to hit him with the other hand and actually just let go, pushed him away, and ran down the steps. By the time he got over to medical, his finger was hanging on by a thread, and he tried to say it was locked in the door, and we knew he was a solid guy. Like, he wouldn't get a tell on anybody, but somebody who had been in the hallway ended up telling. We had locked down after we came back from Chow because they heard there'd been a conflict, and they were going to go around and search people, but they'd actually let my cell partner out to do clothes, but because he had a black eye from the fight, I was out in the back room doing laundry. So the COs came back, they were like, hey man, we gotta get you, like, we hear you were fighting, come with us. I was like, what are you talking about? Like, look, I don't, look at my hands, look at my face, I don't have any marks. And they looked at me, they were like, yeah, you don't look like you've been in a fight. But they then said, okay, well, you got to go up to your room. you got to change in your blues because you can wear shorts and a T-shirt and just shoes in the pod. But anytime you leave the pod, you have to wear your jeans and your button-up shirt. So I went up to change. When I was up there, they saw my cell partner's black eye and were like, no, no, come with us. Like, we got you. And he went back to the hole. He got a charge and ended up losing his job. And this was a guy that didn't have any friends or family support on the outside. Nobody was sending him money. So this is his sole source of income. And as I said, he probably should have just washed the guy's clothes and not let it be an issue, but it was one of those times where we weren't going outside regularly, where it was super hot in the pod and it was super uncomfortable, and everybody was just at a razor's edge. Everybody was just waiting for some excuse to get angry and take it out on somebody else. And that was what was so frustrating about prison. We were all just locked in this tiny space. It was like a tea kettle where the pressure kept getting higher and higher and higher. And there's no air conditioning, so you know it's going to be hot. And there's short staff, so you know you're not always going to get wrecked. So it was just one thing after the other. And when I think about it, that is our correctional system. We take people who don't have the skills they need to succeed in the world. We pack them into a tiny, enclosed, inhumane space with a bunch of other people who don't have the skills they need to succeed in the world. And then we put them in this pressure cooker. And then we wonder why five or 10 or 20 years later when they get out, they tend to not succeed.